Hey, this is John O'Brien, and there's a lie that's been told to working class and even middle class families, and certainly the so-called poor don't own a home. Don't buy a home. It's a bad investment. It's a bad bet. Enjoy your life. Don't buy a home. By the way, everybody telling you to not buy a home on TV, on the news, owns a home. <laughs> Everybody telling you not to buy a home owns a home. Don't don't take my word for it. Uh, I want you in this inner, inner city, inner city, in this digital world we live in now, in this digital world we live in now, and also inner city world we live in now, because by the way, the wealthiest neighborhoods in France or places called Paris, that's an inner city. The wealthiest places in the UK, United Kingdom, is places like London, an inner city. It goes on and goes on and goes on. Inner cities all around the world are invaluable, but we put the, the world, the American leaders put poor people, so-called poor people, blacks and browns in inner cities in the 20th century and move to the suburbs only to realize with traffic and congestion, they want to move back to centrally located real estate. I'll get to that in a minute, which means our real estate is actually invaluable, but we are actively giving it away. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In this digital world, we live in, you can get most information at your fingertips. So if you see somebody on television telling you that homeownership's a bad bet, use your smartphone to be smart. <laughs> use it for something other than checking out, you know, the most interesting stats on sports, which is cool, or seeing the best, you know, the most recent concert or music videos, which is cool. Use it to get in, in to make smart sexy. <laughs> to, to to be to 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 understand what somebody's telling you whether it's a lie or not look up the person look up the the, the broadcaster the tv personality and see if they own a home you put in their name and put in home and see what comes up and if somebody's a public figure you know in in you know eight times out of ten it'll tell you yeah this person owns a home and or, or multiple homes how do i know that because the number one business in the world is real estate. <laughs> the number one business in the world is real estate, all right? Um, in the world. And it's been that way uh, for at least the last 75 years. The number one sector, the biggest business sector in the world, right? Not technology, not healthcare, not music, not entertainment, not, you know, whatever it is you're interested in, not, none of that. The biggest industry, the biggest sector in the world is real estate. The number one way that millionaires become such, and I know as much because I am one, is real estate. I'm, I happen to be, in addition to being the founder of Operation Hope, uh, the largest minority owner, I think this is still true, it was true certainly a year ago, or two, two years ago when I sold the company, uh, the largest minority owner of single family rental real estate in America, single family homes, sorry, uh, largest owner of single family rental homes in America is me. It was a promise homes company. I built the company from 2017 to 2020, I sold it to 2021 for $121 million, did a $200 million credit facility uh, financing. Uh, to recapitalize the company, became a partner in the new company, uh, uh, with my new with my with my new partners, I own the company myself. Now I own it with partners, but we owned you know at one point we own a little less than now seven hundred homes in Florida and we're in 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 Georgia, Greater Atlanta in Florida. Um, and I you know, I started this you know I started my quest with one home right, actually a condo. Uh, then went from one condo to an, a condo and an investment property, and then you know. Uh, then three properties and then five. And okay, then I, you know, decided to go into a business and then went on supercharge mode. And my goal is actually 10,000 homes now, but that's a whole other conversation for another time. That is not the strategies I'm talking to you about now. I'm just telling you, I know what I'm talking about. And at Operation Hope, we've helped, you know, literally thousands of people become homeowners with prime rates uh, because we help them get their credit score up, their debt down, their savings up. Okay, back to the topic. <laughs> Because all this just underscores that I know what I'm talking about, right? And I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention. My mother, who worked an hourly job, Juanita Smith, uh, an hourly job at McDonnell Douglas Aircraft, bought and sold seven homes, making the equivalent of $18 an hour. 
and and when she passed away, September twenty uh, twenty three, uh, God rest her soul, an amazing woman. Uh, she died, you know, with the equivalency of an, a roll up of a million dollar net worth, meaning she had accumulated a million dollars in assets and distributed to her children and others that she loved. But when she passed away working an hourly job because of real estate, she could put her kids into homes. She did that for my sister and my brother, uh, helping them buy homes multiple times. Uh, and I watched her buy and sell homes. It gave her financial freedom, uh, and retire in dignity, right? And she did it as a working class woman. So because my grandmother was a, owned a shotgun shack, my mother owned seven homes, I then owned 700 because now I knew what I could do and I built on that success. Can I get an amen? This is what this is a church of what's happening now. What have you done for me lately? So I know it can be done and I and I've done it. I'm not somebody talking about it, read about it in the book, giving you a motivational speech. I'm telling you that I've made good moves and bad. I'm gonna tell you about a couple of them in this podcast. I almost lost my rear end and would have had to file bankruptcy if the if if the lender had not been gracious toward me when I was building a, a three unit apartment building. I don't want to commend that lender. It was actually Wells Fargo. It was, a, it was a banker at Wells Fargo who saved my bacon when I was building a home for my father to live in. Um, and again, I'll get to that story in a minute. But, you know, I came very close to losing it all. I also made it big. So I almost lost it big there. Uh, but I also made it big. That was a construction loan. Uh, big, relatively speaking. When I bought a a home, you know, condo townhouse home at i was living in an apartment and i moved and got this home and i paid a you know two hundred twenty thousand dollars for it in los angeles on la tijera uh, boulevard right at la tijera and 405 or anybody knows los angeles and then when the economy took a dive um everybody was saying you need to sell the house it's 2008 you need to sell the house get out of the house all my poor friends <laughs> it and you know sell get out get out get out no, no, no. Warren Buffett says, when people are greedy, be afraid. When people are afraid, be greedy. I I just doubled down, right? I, I had a tenant in it. Uh, I, I figured, you know, I'll just hold on to it. And, you know, it went down to a hundred and some odd thousand dollars. Everybody's like, get out, get out. But I had a tenant covering the rent, right? Okay, all good. And I was still getting tax benefits from it. I'll get to that in a minute. Also, the tax benefits of ownership. I held on and somewhere around 2015, I went back to check on the property again. This, so this, this is, you know, now t economic crisis, 2008, 2009, lost my shirt. Supposedly I, I didn't lose my shirt. I still own the property and it was, it had a tenant in it, in, in the property. And so the rent was being covered. 2015, 2016, I decided to, to cash out, buy another property. Do you know, I sold that property for $750,000. Hello, bought it for two twenty. dollars Went down to hundred and something. If people, if I listed that bad advice from my so-called friends, if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the tenth. The, you know, good people. I love my my people, but they gave my my friends were giving me bad advice because they they didn't know better, so couldn't do better. They weren't financial geniuses, and they and they couldn't give me financial genius advice and give me cool how to be cool advice, how to dress advice, how to hang out advice, a lot of other good advice. Uh, maybe even how to parent advice. I'm sure they can give me a lot of great advice, but real estate advice was not one of the ones they could give me. Investment advice was not one of the ones they could give me, and I knew better than to pay attention to what they were saying. It's an old Southern saying, uh, in a blind town, a one-eyed man's king. If you don't know better, you cannot do better, right? And no matter how much I love you, my son or my daughter, if I don't have wisdom, all I can give you is my own ignorance. That's right. So we pass down bad habits from generation to generation. Out of love, we pass down bad habits to you. Please tell me you're hearing what I'm saying. It's so important that you understand that eagles don't fly in packs. You've never seen a flock of eagles, right? You're going to be alone in some of these decisions. You're going to be a solo player. People should tell me, oh, come on, party with us. Come on, hang out. No, I'm, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Enjoy yourself. And I was behind that computer trying to figure out what was going on. Now I don't have to go to the club. I can own it, right? And the people who used to, used to go to the clubs and want me to go with them, wanted me to go with them, are now coming to me asking me for a job. And that's been for successive years, right? So, you know, only in the dictionary does the, does the word success come before the word work because it's alphabetical. I'll repeat that. Only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work because it's alphabetical. So the, I give you one example of how I took a modest investment. I went from renting 
in an apartment in Van Nuys, I believe it was, and buying a, a townhouse for a couple, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, having that property go down in value, holding on to it, moved uh, to, I think, Atlanta, rented that townhouse out, right, but kept it, and then turned around, and that property has literally tripled, more than tripled in value when I sold it for $750,000, and then uh, end up uh, parlaying that into a tax exchange um, uh, uh, I think it's called 1031 tax-free exchange. I think it's what it's called. It's a tax-free exchange where you can buy one property with the proceeds from the property you just sold and you don't pay taxes on it. And I end up leveraging that up into a multi-million dollar investment. Uh, so that little $200,000 townhouse morphed into a multi-million dollar investment. And that's not the Promise Homes Company I'm telling you about, right? Now, what, what where else can you do that? And then the piece where I lost my shirt, I'll just tell you this, I almost lost my shirt, then I'm going to get into the basics of, of why you should own a home. My dad uh, made some financial mistakes, made some missed moves, or some bad moves. A good guy, but was not financially literate. Nobody taught him how money worked, so it wasn't his fault, but he, he didn't know better, so he couldn't do better. So I'm not blaming this on you. I'm telling you that this is in my own family. We're not ashamed of it because he just didn't know any better. And he worked his whole life working uh, in construction, owning his own business, meeting a payroll, which is where I learned how to do it. And payroll was every race of people out of the front door of our home. So race to me was, you know, not a negative thing. I had no problem with white people or Asians or Latinos or whatever. They all worked for my dad. So the color was green, but my dad couldn't keep the money. He made a dollar, spent a dollar fifty. The more money we made, the broker we got, right? And he ended up, you know, fast forward, living with this lady he was dating my mom and dad had divorced and she controlled his life like I mean, she was you know I, i'll say it it's like he was pimping him like you know she be my boyfriend by the way i'm giving you housing right so he lived in a house that she controlled she didn't live there she controlled it and she controlled him i was like oh no we're not doing this so with my dad's permission i bought the house from the lady um and but then i realized i couldn't just subsidize this payment every month of the mortgage so I learned the rules, I learned the, you know, get the memo on money. That's my, I don't know, my third, I think it's my fourth book, the memo, get that, right? And uh, and learn the game, build, you know, knock three walls down, keep one wall up, uh, and build a three-unit apartment building around that, you know, uh, around those the, the remaining wall, turn it into an income-producing property was my, my strategy. Let my dad live in the front unit. And I'd rent out the other two. Actually, it was supposed to be a four-unit building, but my dad screwed up his zoning ordinance, and, and I ended up having to go from four units to three. The numbers still work. He would live in the front unit for free. The other two units would pay the mortgage payment and you know property taxes and maintenance and a little income. Not bad, right? Well, I let my dad emotional decision. Uh, who was a you know was a construction guy. He knew what he was doing, but I let him manage not the job of construction. I let him manage the money. And make a long story short, he ran through six hundred and fifty thousand dollars of construction loan. Ouch! Uh, did not finish the project. Ouch! I had to go back to the lender, Tom Swanson. That's the guy's name. I said, Tom, are you listening to this? God bless you, brother. And I had to get. Um, and luckily, values at this time were going up, so I so I got the property reappraised, and luckily it reappraised higher. So I got a refinance of the construction loan. If 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 I couldn't do that. I would have had to file bankruptcy, refinance of the construction loan, um, and gotten just enough proceeds to finish the job, get a permanent loan, put on the property, paid off the construction loan. Um, I also gave my dad a, a, a American Express credit card, a six thousand dollar limit. He ran that up to the limit, and I, <laughs> I mean, this is back when six thousand dollars might as well have been six million. And I mean, money really does call, create drama in relationships. Like the number one cause of divorce is money. Like this really created a problem with me and my dad. But he's my father, so I couldn't be disrespectful. But I'm like, he was being disrespectful to my wallet. And he meant well, but just, you know, just financially illiterate. And so I had to like learn to give him money, but not a credit card. You know, give him give him a card, you know, a gift card that had, you know, money on it, load it, but nothing more. Or, you know, I had to, be, you know, I had to find ways to let him live in dignity, but not to have an open, you know, credit line. So I finished that and was able to sell that property later on and clear all my debts. And his, by the way, he died, uh, got rest his soul in dignity at 89 years of age in a home that, you know, he controlled.
So why should you want to own a home? Because everybody else who's got wealth does. Let's start there. Because it's the number one way you build wealth in America, right? Why should you want to own a home? Because when you buy a home, uh, you get the benefit of depreciation, the tax benefit. The tax system was created to benefit homeowners. You get the benefit of depreciation, tax benefits. You get the benefit of appreciation, the, the increase in value of that home. I'm going to break this stuff down. I talk to you in plain English. You write off, you know, if you have a 30-year mortgage, on average, 15, certainly 20 years of that mortgage, you write off its mortgage interest. 20 of a 30-year mortgage is mortgage interest. Well, you write that off against your uh, taxes, against your income. So you're going to get a lot of that money back as a tax refund. You can't get that back if you're renting. If you're renting from me, uh, and I'd love you to be a renter for me, right? But at some point, I want you to leave. I want you to go from rent to own. But you're renting from me, or you, you're 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 renting in some fancy place. You know, you're renting you're renting from some place you can't afford in a neighborhood that don't want you with money you don't have to impress people you don't know about stuff that don't matter, right? <laughs> Real talk. So you're renting in this skyscraper somewhere with a doorman, right? You, you, yeah, but you you don't have a doorman. You also have a, a you also have a window taker because you're opening that window and somebody's taking your money as you throw that money for rent out the window every month. I, by the way, I was a renter. There's a time to be a renter. You just shouldn't be a renter for the, your entire life, in my opinion. So if you consider yourself an LLC, a limited liability corporation, consider yourself a business, right? Where are your assets? Your assets cannot be on your <clears throat> ASS. <laughs> you got to own something and you build wealth in your sleep. You make money during the day, you build wealth in your sleep. It's called appreciation compounding, right? Stocks, home ownership, bonds, businesses, real estate, uh, even education, higher education, compounds. That's an investment. So when you, you know, only in real estate where you, are you going to get the sort of kind of secured uh, opportunities. You know, real estate has never gone down in value in the history of, of, of the modern world in America. Now, somebody's going to say, now we got John, this is wrong. We're like there was a crisis in 2008. There was a crisis in, you know, whenever, you know, 2000. No, it, there's a crisis, right? In real estate, it goes, it goes up. There's a crisis. It dips, right? Down, right? As it did in my situation. And then when it corrects, it always corrects above the line, which means that it goes back up uh, above the deep, the dip and typically breaches the value that you bought it for if you hold on to it long enough because there just aren't growing in, in any more land it's finite and it 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 is is secured investment and again for all the reasons i just mentioned to you uh the tax system is designed to benefit uh real estate owners specifically home ownership now uh i'm gonna tell you in short order why uh people benefit from you not understanding this game um, and this is not a racial comment I'm making. I'm just saying that some people understood this game and other people did not.
in after the Civil War, I'm gonna make this really quick. Uh, after the Civil War, uh, you had 40 acres and a mule. And I'll do this in a separate podcast around the Freedmen's Bank. Uh, it was Field Action 15 uh, in Savannah, Georgia. 20 former, former slave ministers asked by Secretary of War Stanton, General Sherman, what do you want after slavery? What do you want? Do you want, a, do you want an apology? you want welfare? No, 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 no. We want land. We want to do for ourselves. So they ultimately got uh, 40 acres for each uh, uh, family, uh, a couple hundred bucks for seeds and, and things like seed corn you know, uh, 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 you know, for the, the land to grow and to nurture. And they worked that land so hard, they were ultimately given a mule, like a tractor, because they were so industrious. And uh, when Lincoln was assassinated a year later, that rule was reversed, and the uh, former slave-owning landowners get, end up getting that land back plus some money. Now, that's not what this podcast is about. That's not what this episode's about. But the reason I'm telling you that story is some people think that four million slaves got 40 acres in a mule. No, 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 no. 18,000 families split up 40, 400,000 acres, and that land was reversed after they got it. And it wasn't even good land. It was along the uh, ocean around North Carolina, South Carolina. It was a coastal property, uh, and it was just hard to you know grow agriculture on, but we took it and ran and, and worked it anyway because we do, we, we've been doing so much for, with so little for so long. We can almost do anything with nothing, meaning African Americans were very industrious. Um, but they they took that back. Why am I telling that story? Because soon after that, a couple years after that, there was a Homestead Act, about 270 million acres, 10% of all land in America given to anybody, read mostly white, 99 point something percent of all the recipients of the Homestead Act were white settlers that were going west would get, um, uh, you know, uh, I think it was 660 acres, as I'm right, if, I, if I'm correct. You had to work the land. The government created um, uh, institutions of agriculture. They created basically mentors, business mentors for agriculture uh, in these counties that would help new farmers uh, to, you know, understand how to own and grow the land. Uh, but, but you got this land for free. And 270 million acres and, and uh, 1.5 million uh, families uh, took the 270 million acres. And I think it was 6,000 families, if I got that number right, were black of 1.5 million uh, total uh, uh, families that got a plot of land, uh, which is uh, upwards of 100 million beneficiary families today. It's a whole other conversation. But that land represents 10% of all land in America. That was a Homestead Act. Okay, now you fast forward to the early 20th century and you had, you know, now you have, you know, uh, mortgages from the government, part of the New Deal um, and the FHA, fair, uh, the um, FHA, I think it's Fair Housing, Federal Housing Authority is what it's called. I'm doing this without notes. So, and this is all memory and, and my knowledge. And the FHA, Unlike the rumor that banks created redlining, the federal government created redlining because the federal government said they would insure mortgages, right, in neighborhoods. But if a neighborhood was viewed as as risky or you know, you know dangerous, they would put uh, well, they there was a green, there were green neighborhoods. Guess where those were? <laughs> there were yellow, you know, markings. Those were sketchy, but you know, debatable. And then there were red. Oh no. That's a no-go zone. And the and the government refused to finance, I'm sorry, to guarantee a mortgage in those neighborhoods. Well, guess where the banks refused to make mortgages? It wasn't necessarily racial. But if you're in a red zone and the government's not going to guarantee a mortgage, then the bank's not going to lend uh, 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 on a home in that area, on a mortgage. They're going to go to where it's safe because money's a coward. Money wants to be safe. I understand that. So money would go to what would in this case would be white neighborhoods and they'd make the mortgages there. So uh, where do you think the values went up? The values went up in the white or the green neighborhoods, which happened to be mostly in this case, you know, example, white homeowners. Uh, and it went down, it was depressed in black neighborhoods, right? And then you had covenants, restrictive covenants on uh, homes that blacks could not buy in these green neighborhoods is a whole nother game. And then you come up through World War II um, and the GI Bill, 99% you know, of all the GI Bill recipients were non-black, white, 
This is where the middle class was created. Again, this is not a this is not a white versus black thing. This is a green thing. I'm just giving you a history lesson of why black people have a net worth that is, you know, a mere fraction of white net worth. Uh, it, for thing because you know, in one of these areas of home ownership, we have not uh, either taken advantage of it or mostly it's been denied of it. Right now, we're not taking advantage of it. 41, 43 percent of all home ownership is black compared to 75% of our mainstream counterparts. But in history, right, you know, civil rights movement in before, it was restricted from us, it was kept from us. But I'm I'm uh, demystifying the game. I'm telling you now how this game is played. And if you have good credit, the bank will just say yes, right? Uh, so the, the, the color is green, the, the playing field is more level today than it has ever been. My mother's story is an example of what I'm telling you, right? My story is an example of what I'm telling you, right? So. Uh, and by the way, there's more poor white people than poor anybody else, and they suffer from the same problem because they never got the memo on money. That's another video for another, another, another podcast for another time. I don't want anybody here thinking that this is John making a case against anybody. I'm making a case for you. I'm just trying to uh, not emotionally explain to you how bad things can happen to good people. You know, I, I don't want to own a home. I hear this all the time. I don't want to own a home. The bank owns a home. This is a game. This is a scam. I don't own a home. The bank owns a home. If you don't pay, <laughs> yeah, I said it. If you don't pay the mortgage, yes, the bank owns a home. As I would, as I said in a session with my brother Ti at our whole global forum, uh, you know, if I if I lend you money to buy a home and you don't pay me, I'm going to own your home, <laughs> right? It's not personal. Right? This is business. Uh, the color is not black or white or red or blue, as in race or politics. The color is green, as in U.S. currency. At least in America, the color is green. It's economics, right? And so, as long as you pay that mortgage, right? And 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 before interest rates went up, it was cheaper to own a home than it was to rent. Now, you know, you got to be more careful and thought about it, thoughtful about it. But I can still, I'll still uh, guarantee you that over the long term, it's always cheaper to own. Well, sorry, it's always a better investment to own. It may not be cheaper on a cash on cash basis in the short term, but your rent your rental property is not your rental property, and it's not going to appreciate in your pocket, right? So you you you're just living in the moment. I'm telling you, here's your plan. If you're a working class person, if you're a middle class family, and you're listening to this podcast, here's your business plan. I want you to buy a home, and I want you to uh, buy the best house on the worst block. Right, <laughs> um, uh, and or the or you you can buy the best house on the worst block, right? So if you're going uh, to a middle class neighborhood, buy the worst house in the best block and rehab it, and live in it. Or if you're in the hood, right, uh, you you want to find you want to find a house on that block, right, and rehab it and live in it. You know, but preferably the best house. Um, I'll get back to that that strategy in one second. But buy the best house. Right, uh, that you can, that you can afford, uh, so you don't have any deferred maintenance, uh, but rehab it and live in it, or sorry, upgrade it. You know, you know, make that as part of the acquisition that you build enough in for painting and anything that needs to be needs to you know get a get an inspection on the house, right? Get pre-approved. Operational can help you do that for free. To, and if you have a if if we get your credit score up above 700, 750 for sure. Used to be just 700, but now that interest rates have changed, it might be a little bit above 700. We'll get you a prime mortgage, right? We'll get you a mortgage like every other uh, uh, successful asp aspiring person in America, right? Not one of these homeboys shopping at word mortgages, a good one, right? <laughs> not one that didn't explodes. As we on car loans, we used to say, no, that's not a Mercedes in the hood. That's a Mercedes payments. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do a whole thing on auto loans and and the and how that game really, how car dealerships and the car business really works. I'm gonna unpack that whole, I'm gonna do a masterclass unpacking that whole situation. So we can get you into a home, right? And that would include, you know, a budget you're gonna have for maintenance and anything to fix up. Then I want you to, to, to take over time, the equity from that house that you build up and uh, over time have a plan over, you know, five years, 10 years max, right? Pay patient, buy, a home in the hood using equity from your home if you can, or if you have to, if you don't have other sources, uh, as, a, as your home appreciates, and buy a, a modest home in the inner city. Rehab it and rent it. Do that twice. Now you have three homes, one you're living in and two that you bought as rentals, and you've now created generational wealth for a lifetime. So within 30 minutes, 
we've we've gone, we've given you a history lesson, we've given you a context lesson, we've unpacked the mystery of some finance, the mystery of why good things happen sometimes uh, to bad people and how bad things can happen to good people. Uh, we've talked about um, the, the the three ways, uh, the easy ways uh, that you can figure out immediately why you should own a home and not in, 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 and why you shouldn't rent for any longer than you uh, have to, which is appreciation, which goes in your pocket, depreciation, which helps you uh, from a tax perspective, uh, and um, in uh, in writing off uh, mortgage payments against your income, which means at the end of the year you, you have a good tax pro or even a decent one you'll get a refund, a tax refund from some of the mortgage proceeds that you put into your own home. And as that home compounds and increases in value, guess who benefits? You. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit, a little bit of, of private news. Um, about less than two years ago, just to tell you how powerful real estate is, about less than two years ago, um, I bought a, uh, we bought a, um, a, a home in another country, Turks and Caicos. and um, uh, I'm not going to give you exact numbers, but, you know, respectable value, right? Bought it, and less than two years later, the realtor calls me and says, and I've got, you know, I've got an opportunity to sell that house for you. Would you like to sell it? Well, I, said, I said, just tell me the number. Well, the number was 75% more than what I paid for it <laughs> in 18 months, less than two years. I could have almost doubled value doubled my value in less than two years on a secured real estate investment in another country. <laughs> what business, right, legal, <laughs> can you do that in? Now, I didn't buy it for that purpose. I didn't buy it for that reason. Uh, I bought it because it was a nice place for me and my family to get away to, right? Uh, and it, and the way I structured it, it pays for itself. That's a whole nother conversation I may get into. By the way, you can put comments of what topics you want me to cover, by the way. but. In this example is like win, 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 right? It pays for itself and it went up in value when I wasn't sleeping. It made me look like a, like a genius. My net worth went up and I didn't do anything but, but own it be because there's just not enough properties like the one I bought in the area and other people want the property and there's nothing else available for sale and uh, I'm not selling, <laughs> right? I'll own that property as long as, I, as long as I can. I like to buy property and hold on to it. Uh, some people need to, you know, uh, this whole buy and flip thing, that's just not for me. I think you should buy properties, cash flow them um, so they pay, take care of themselves and hold on to them because they will go up in value. If you have to sell, if there's some strategic reason in selling, like the 1031 tax-free exchange I did, that I talked to you about early in this uh, podcast, then fine. But uh, in general, you want to accumulate wealth. And, you know, again, 41 to 43% of black folks own a home today compared to 75% of our white counterparts. Uh, there, there, if there's all kind of uh, obstacles in your way, you know, in generations before us, but those obstacles don't exist today. You can do this. Half of black folks, not poor people, half of black folks today have a credit score below 620. Half. That means when you wake up in the morning, you're locked out of the free enterprise system. Operation Hope can help you. Download the Hope in Hand app or go to operationhope.org or call 888-388-HOPE and get a Hope Financial Coach and they will help you raise your credit score 50, 50, on average 54 points in six months, uh, over 100 points uh, in, uh, in in you know less than 24 months. They'll help you get your, your debt down on average, $3,800 for somebody making $50,000 a year and your savings up um, you know more than $2,000 for that same person. And we can get you, you know, get you bank qualified, right? Get you in the game so that you can become a homeowner or, or through one million black business initiative, you know, one MBB, become a small business owner or whatever it is you want to do. Live your dreams, but give you optionality in life. Freedom is self-determination, but you cannot self-determine yourself unless you understand the rules of the game and understand that financial literacy is a civil rights issue of this generation. If you don't know better, you cannot do better. You can go to church every Sunday, be the nicest person in the world. But if you don't understand what we've been talking about here, you can't win in this game. Uh, and, and we're going to help you master it step by step. Um, and real talk, I'm not going to use 20 words when two will do. I'm going I'm to lay this, stuff, this thing out for you. I'm going to use my life as a personal testimony. And uh, I'm going to take questions and answer questions and, 
and talk about what's going on in the moment, but also talk about things that I call are, are evergreen, that just is stuff that will help you for the rest of your life. This is a radical movement of common sense, right? There's nothing I've said here today that can be reasonably deep, you know, uh, 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 debated. I mean, this is just basic, basic stuff. It's just that people have kept the knowledge from you and me. And then people say, oh, well, you know, you know, people, you know, destroyed black wealth in the 2008, 2009. Well, the black wealth was destroyed in part because we bought a home like you, uh, I don't know what you want to buy. I mean, I, I don't, I don't buy even a car or I don't buy anything this way, this way, but sometimes we ask the wrong question. Like, what's the payment when there's an interest rate attached? We asked on a six-figure property, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000, what's the payment on that going to be? Without understanding that people were giving you these crappy loans, these per these perfect eyesight loans, 20 points, 20% 20 interest, 2020 loans. When you got the loan, you went blind. 20 points, meaning 20, 20 points is like 20%, 20 cents on a dollar in a fee going to the mortgage broker typically and 20% interest or just, you know, what's called a, a negative amortization loan, which means every, yeah, your payment's low, but every time you make a payment, you owe more on the loan the next month. I'm sorry, you know, yeah, you owe more money on the loan balance the next month. So basically it's negative amortization. It's going up in debt, um, even though your payment is what you want. Uh, there was adjustable rate, adjustable rate mortgages. You really don't want an adjustable rate mortgage if you can it, it, it avoid it at all on a on a 30 year home because as rates go up your payment can explode imagine if you had an adjustable rate mortgage in the current environment in 23 2023 going into 2024 your interest your payment might have doubled or tripled but probably tripled uh you want a fixed rate mortgage we do that by getting you good credit so that you can you know negotiate from a place of strength. There's a lot of tricks in this game, and I know most of them. If I don't know them, my team does. Um, and we're going to teach them to you uh, so that you can master this game at scale in your life and become the leader uh, of your life. I didn't cover everything, but hopefully I covered enough uh, to wet your, to wet your, your, uh, to moisten your, your taste for aspirational success and silver rights from civil rights in the streets to silver rights in the suites at scale. Okay, go to Operation Hope today, take back your life and map out how you're gonna become a homeowner. So you can send your kids to college, start a business with the equity, buy other homes with equity, go on vacations, plan your retirement, whatever you wanna do. It's possible, as my mother did, to live in dignity in the, the you know, the, 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 the you know, mellow years of your life because you you know you you understood that that you, you when you work you're just living for the, the for the day like you're literally just making money for the day, but you build wealth in your sleep. And one of the ways, one of the easiest ways to do that that most is available to most people is home ownership. Small business is not for most people, but home ownership I believe is. And anybody telling you who's successful that that you shouldn't own a home, I, I don't know why they're telling you that other than they want more for themselves. Uh, they're just being provocative because they own a home nine times out of 10. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. All right. Love and light. I'm out. John Ho Bryant. Let me know what you think. Peace and light. I love you, by the way. Like, keep it simple and keep it modest. Don't be dramatic. This is no time to get fancy, right? I want you to ask a whole lot of questions. I asked Quincy Jones once, man, how'd you get so smart? He said, John, I'm just nosy as hell. I want to know everything about everything. Well, that's how I want you to be about real estate. I want you to know everything about everything. Ambassador Andrew Young, my mentor, my hero, my 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 man, the 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 the, the right arm to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the, one of the central leaders of the civil rights movement, says that men and women fail for three reasons: arrogance, pride, and greed. Hello, I don't want you prideful. I don't want you arrogant. I certainly don't want you greedy because you'll over you'll get ahead of your skis. You'll start doing crazy stuff and. Yeah, I'll get to that in a minute, maybe. I want to keep this simple and answer a question first. But I, I want you to just be humble, right? Ask a whole bunch of questions. Go to Operation Hope. Talk to one of my Hope Financial coaches. Just ask a whole bunch of, you know, there's no silly question. There's no stupid question. Ask because no one taught you this stuff. No one gave you a, a lesson in financial literacy or how capitalism and free enterprise works. It's what you don't know that you don't know that's killing you, but you think you know. 
But the, but the, but the, what, here's what I want you to not do. I don't want you to have to listen to anybody who's trying to separate you from your wallet. Don't invest, if you want to call it that, in um, uh, fractional real estate. That's not the way to start. Don't invest in um, what are these things? I mean, I I, I did these um, timeshares. I'm not hating on timeshares. Actually, I am. <laughs> I own one. I've been I've been trying to get rid of this thing for you know probably 10 years. I've, I've owned it for 25 years. It's a, it, it, it's just drained me. You know, basically I've rented, I've rented, you know, a piece of somebody else's, well, I own a piece of the real estate, but I, because I don't own the whole real estate. I don't owe it fee simple as we call it. I own a fraction of it that I, yes, I can feel pride that I have a piece of real estate and it's a good location. It's in Newport beach along the ocean, but I have to, I can't just go sell it. I got to negotiate with you know, all the, uh, well, in, in alignment with all the other fractional owners and the master controller of that, which is a company I won't name. Um, and I got to pay, if I don't pay the maintenance fee every year, you know, they can take the property from me. It just gets ridiculous. Uh, so, and you know, you don't have to like do something complicated like that. You don't even need to go buy a big home. You can buy a condo, a townhouse, start modestly, right? You can buy Buy a, there was a, when I got the Atlanta, you could buy a, a rundown piece of property for five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. There are small towns maybe where you live. You want to draw, buy something, you know, close to where you can get to, trend, you know, drive back and forth uh, there every day if you need to. Uh, you know, so you don't want to do something more than a couple hours from where you are. I'd say more than an hour from where you are. Um, and somebody who can maybe help oversee the property with you if you're, you know, doing this with somebody else, doing it with a partner or, or family or whatever, right? But you want to do it modest. You want to keep it simple. Uh, clearly, buying your own home is smart. But if you do that, a start, there's nothing wrong with a starter home. Don't go trying to buy a mini mansion if you, you know, work for the Postal Service. Uh, look, my mother worked at McDonald's Douglas Aircraft. And she she when she got laid off there, she was a she was a janitor part-time at my school. I'm not hating on the, any kind of job occupation. She was a security guard. I'm saying if you were a security guard, if you're a janitor, if you're a postal worker, if you, you know, whatever, some, uh, you know, cool, really important, but modest uh, employment situation, don't go trying to buy a half million, $750,000, million dollar property. That's crazy, right? And don't listen to anybody trying to sell it to you, right? You want to buy something that, that doesn't stress you out. That, that you can that you can handle right uh basically you want to buy something that would equate to what you pay for rent on a monthly basis and you want to have you know have you know save up and have a little reserve on the side now maybe you don't have a big down payment that's okay go to my coaches if, if you never heard of the earned income tax credit and you make less than sixty thousand dollars a year uh congratulations i've also just told you that you've got some money coming to you that's right eitc if you make less than $60,000 a year, and if you have three children, check this out, you make $35,000 a year. You got three kids, the government owes you $6,000, uh, I think that's the number, about $6,000, $6,500 uh, in, a in a cash tax refund. If you never heard of EITC, it's retroactive for three years. Okay, that's now, help me with the math, that's you know, $18,000, almost $20,000. Uh, there's your down payment. For, for your home, your, buy, your first starter home you want to buy, if you need 10% or 5% down payment, now you have a down payment, plus you have a reserve for uh, maintenance and anything that goes bump in the night, upkeep for the house, whatever, right? Because you want to have a little account set up, set aside for, you know, the pipe burst or whatever. Uh, and, there, you know, and my team can also, like, help you put, you know, a proper budget in place and get your credit score up so you get, you know, gr a great mortgage. So you want to get pre-qualified. Uh, with a lender, and you want to make sure it's not not a hard money lender, not you know, not boo boo and pookie in them. You want to you want to get a proper you know this is a this is a, uh, you know this is about getting married. You get married to this property. It's a it's going to be a thirty year mortgage uh, commitment, and you want to make sure it's a good mortgage, right? You want to be cool with it as it's cool with you, and you you want a fixed rate in my opinion. And if you have a seven hundred credit score or better, you're going to get a good rate. And you're going to lock that in through my people uh, or whoever you work with. My people work for free, right? And uh, and then you take that that commitment that, that you maybe get approved for $150,000, $250,000, $300,000, whatever, you know, $40,000 you get approved for. I don't think your starter house should be any more than that. Hello. 
um, and uh, start a house or first piece of real estate uh, is an investment property. And then go, you know, with confidence, get get a broker, uh, you know, who to, to represent you. So they know more about, you know, the area and all that than you do. Uh, and take your time and wait for something to inspire you. Again, you got to decide whether you want to invest in your own starter home yourself or whether you want to invest in a investment property like a, um, you know, a, buy a, a, a raggedy home in the hood uh, that you buy, you rehab and you rent, or, you know, maybe it's a duplex or maybe it's a triplex or, you know, you know I wouldn't suggest a multifamily as your first investment. So keep it simple um, and uh, be humble and ask a lot of questions and take your time. It's very hard. It's very easy to get married, very hard to get divorced. And the same thing applies to real estate. Very easy to get into something bad and very hard to get out of it once you're already committed to it. So, again, keep it simple, keep it humble, keep it modest and keep it moving. All right. Love and light. Uh, and thank you very much to this wonderful question uh, from Sasha. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at the finish line, Sasha. I, I, you know, with questions like this, no doubt you're going to be successful.